I planned this video weeks ago and I'm just recording it now, April 7th. I'm slacking, I'm slacking, but in my defense, I run free channels on a Twitch, so there's my excuse. And next month, there's another excuse as well because I start my new job next month for the start of May. So by then, I'll be screwed. But anyway, this is a story time. It's going to be on two channels. On the main channel because it's AFR related and also partly Arsenal related. You probably wonder why. We'll get to that in a second. And it's going to be on the personal channel, Master Davidoff, because it's a story time. I wanted to put personal videos on there, story times, vlog, etc. So this applies. So it'll be in that channel as well. People still ask me, even now, how I got into AFL. And I give the same answer. A guy I knew on Twitter recommended me AFL. And I reacted to it, got more requests through that reaction, then I reacted more and more, and I got through, and I got into the sport through those reactions, and I got more interested by doing more reactions, and then I really became a fan in the 2017 season. That's when I really started like properly loving the sport. I liked it beforehand though. That's the short answer, but there's a longer answer, and there's more of a story behind it. So, how does this relate to Arsenal when it comes to sports and just things in general. There is nothing I love more, and I mean nothing. There is nothing I love more than Arsenal Football Club. And there's a personal connection there. I live in the same city as Arsenal as well, which really helps because I can go to games. I didn't start going to games till 2010 because I wasn't allowed to. My family never, never let me go, never took me. So I didn't get a chance to go to games. But when I got to secondary school in like year eight, a friend of mine, um, recommended me like he, he told me how to get membership so I started going to games in 2012 when I was in year 10 my first game was in year 10 with my mate and it was great there was like eight people at my school who like went Arsenal games so I went with them for a number of years then we all went to uni I mean they went to uni I sort of got held back a year so after that I went on my own I, I kept going and since 2010 I've been to 199 games in, in, in just a decade as well so that's pretty crazy it would be 201 right now but obviously lockdown Game got cancelled. So if you don't watch the sports, there is a thing called the Champions League. Now every continent has their own Champions League. It might not be called that, but every continent has their own Champions League. Is where the best teams from the ton from the best teams from the continent play in a tournament. And in Euro in Europe, it's 32 teams. There's four from England, four from Italy, four from Spain, four from Germany, and then there's like two from Turkey. I don't know, I don't know how it's like. Uh, it, it depends on how good your league is, how many places you get in that competition. But the point is, right, Arsenal were in the Champions League final in 2006. It took place in Paris, which was quite convenient considering half our team was French and we had a French manager and they were all pretty damn good players and, and manager, of course. So it was like written, like the headlines were written. Arsenal winning the Champions League in Paris, that's just, that would have been something like a fairy tale. But the day didn't go quite well. Arsenal have never won a Champions League and 2006 was our only chance and I think it might have been an early chance unfortunately because the club's getting worse. But somehow we had a lot of great teams over the years, even the 80s and back way before when and the early 2000s but only one Champions League final which is ridiculous but the point is we got there and within like 10 minutes the goalkeeper got sent off and this goalkeeper had not conceded a goal the entire tournament no one scored past him the entire tournament and he got a red card within a few minutes and the rule is you have to have a goalkeeper in goal so if your goalkeeper gets sent off then you got to take off your outfield player to bring on another goalkeeper as a substitute and if you don't have any substitutes left then you got to like put someone in outfield in goal the point is, we took off one of our best forwards in Perez, had to take him off to bring on our reserve goalkeeper, who was ultimately just terrible. Alright, so th that was a downside. But we scored the first goal, went 1-0 up and it was all going well. Unfortunately, Thierry Henry, who is my childhood hero, he is our greatest player arguably, our highest goal scorer, Frenchman who, is, who was so damn good, world class, at the time he was amazing and he had two big chances. Unfortunately, even the best have their off days. And for him, his off day was the Champions League final, the biggest game a European team can play. And he had at least two, I think he had more, I can't remember, I, don't, I haven't watched the game since 2006, honestly. But he had two big chances, and he missed, he missed, he, he missed both times. And most, most days he scores both of those, 
but that day he didn't. And when you're the other team and you're only one goal down, you have hope. You have hope. And I'm pretty sure in an interview or something, one of the Barcelona, we played against Barcelona, one of their players said that if they scored a second goal, they would have given up. And that kind of hurts even more. Because what happened was, 12 minutes to go, they score, 1-1. One, one. Then they score again through the goalkeeper's legs. The reserve goalkeeper was rubbish, to say the least. That second goal pissed me off a lot. But um, that it, it's annoying. That sticks in the memory. It's like, it's like PTSD. Like I haven't watched, I, I haven't rewatched this final, and I remember that winning goal like, like off the top of my head. It's, it's, it's ridiculous through the goalkeeper's legs. But they scored the second goal. They won the Champions League, and I was a ten-year-old. I cried. The first time I ever cried over an Arsenal game, I was just so devastated. I saw us win Premier Leagues, I've seen us win FA Cups, and that's all great, but we've never won a Champions League, not even one. Not even one. And that was our only chance, and it hurts even more now, considering at the time, we thought, hey, we can get back to the final. But 14 years later, we look hopeless. We've been in genuine relegation danger. And I look back on that, every year it just hurts because we might never get that chance again. And we, we just, we blew it. We absolutely blew it. And um, basically this final set Arsenal off on a downward spiral. I honestly think this was a history changing game because if we win that final, we have more money, more players stay with us like Fabregas and more players come to us because, hey, they won the Champions League. I want to play for them now. There's an influence. Like when you win the Champions League, there's, there's an elevation for your club. And the fact that we didn't win that final, I think, set us off. So the next few years, we were an almost team. We almost won Premier Leagues. Got the Champions League semi-final, like three years later. Uh, had a few cup finals at Wembley. We didn't win anything up until 2014. We won the FA Cup, but no Premier League since that Champions League final. No Champions League final since then either. Downward spiral. And after being an almost team, we became a top four team, just settling for top four. After that, got even worse. Can't even get top four. So. The competition that we had a chance of winning 14 years ago, we can't even qualify for now because you need to get in the top four to qualify. So that's a load of bollocks. That summarized as much as possible. Like I'd recorded this video once already, like the previous day, and it was a half an hour video and just thought, you know what, I got to shorten this somehow. So I thought we record it. So yeah, efforts, efforts. But uh, the point is it was heartbreaking. I don't sound as emotional, but it's really heartbreaking. I cried that day. It still hurts to this day. Like, it, honestly, that, that one game hurts. It hurts. Every time Arsenal fail, that game hurts even more. Because I honestly think that's a, that's a game-changing moment, you know? In a bad way for Arsenal. It just set us off on a downward spiral. Gradual downward spiral. But anyway, because of that, I thought, you know what? This, it's so much heartbreak and stress. I love this club, and I always will. And I'll always watch games and sometimes go to games, but damn, it's painful to see us fail every single year. I need an escape, even though Arsenal themselves are meant to be an escape. I need an escape from Arsenal as well, so I thought, you know what, I need to find a new sport, a new team sport that is. I was into tennis, I was into F1, but then it got boring, but I was, I'm, I'm into tennis right now actually. I, I, I love tennis, I like the fighting sports like boxing, UFC. But I needed a new team sport. I watched a bit of rugby, but wasn't like insanely interested in it. I was just I just casually watched it. I needed a sport, a team sport that I could really get into. At the time I thought NBA because a lot of people watched it already and it's quite popular. And to be fair, I got into NBA after I got into AFL. Um, I picked the Lakers because of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I thought great sitcom, they mentioned the Lakers, let's pick the Lakers. Stupid reason. But I picked them in 2017 and they lost every game. So I thought, bad idea. And one year later, LeBron joined. So I just thought, okay, maybe it's not so bad. But when I first started uh, backing the Lakers and they lost every game, I was just like, what have I done? Bad decision. And I got into NHL as well, um, ice hockey. I picked the LA Kings because I picked the LA basketball team. So I thought, hey, pick the Kings as well. Stupid reasons, I know, but no one I know watches NHL, so. I don't know who to ask. But this was after I got into AFL. But like, I mentioned these sports because even though I watch them and I'm into them, I casually watch them. Like, I, I'm not like, the interest level is not, it's just not there the same way AFL is. To be fair though, 
I do like ice hockey. It's like it's really fun. It's really fast paced. You get some fights as well. It's quite rough in a way. I, I, I like ice hockey. I need to watch more of it actually. It's, it's postponed now anyway, but I'm enjoying ice hockey quite a lot more than NBA. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention something. Um, Arsenal, um, I, I was in a dark place in 2012. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm not ready for that conversation yet. It might be a story time in like two years. You never know. Uh, keep in touch. But uh, I was in a really dark place after secondary school. It was, a really, it was the worst years of my life. And sometimes Arsenal were the only thing keeping me going, keeping me seen the next day. So in a way, they kind of saved my life as well. So like, it's not like I... It's not like I have a problem with Arsenal. Even in failure, I still love watching them. Uh, it's just that, you know, some things... Sometimes when you love something so much, you know, it can really break you when they fail. And uh, that's what happened with me. That big final, just one off. I'm sure, like, if you're an AFL fan, with some teams you can probably relate. It depends on the team you support. I'm trying to think of a good comparison. What's a team that's not won the flag and got to one grand final? <laughs> does, does that team exist? Did Frio get to a grand final? It might, it might be, it might be Frio. They're, qu they're quite a fairly new team though. I'm not sure that counts. The reason why I didn't properly get into a new sport anyway was because I hardly had the time. And that wasn't like on purpose, it's just that I spent a lot of time on YouTube. I was doing gaming videos at the time and gaming videos take a long time to make. Even if they're like low quality like they were before. They still took a while to make gaming videos. And I was at uni as well, so uni coursework... I mean, if you've been to the uni, you know, uni coursework is long. Uni work is... It, it's ridiculous. I was, doing, I was doing accounting and finance, which is quite detailed in terms of like what coursework you do, so... Uh, but yeah, I was, I was either doing uni work or YouTube work, or I was playing games, usually for YouTube, or I was going to the cinema to watch a movie, or I was maybe watching a TV show, or I was just going out with friends to like have a drink or something. And that was all my time, aside from sleeping and <laughs> eating food. That's, that was all my time, so... I had no time. Having said that, YouTube at the time, I was doing the gaming channel and um, I was not happy with the way the things were going. I, I wanted to introduce new things because the gaming videos, I was gaining, but very, very slowly. I wasn't really going very far. So I thought, I've got to introduce something new, become more of a variety channel. So I ordered a camera from Amazon, spent like £565. I'm pretty sure last year, I think last year, I think it was last year, YouTube actually paid that off. So, uh, yeah, paid off the camera. Yes, I'm still using it right now. Although actually it broke and this one replaced it through insurance. But I didn't pay for the insurance camera, so technically it's the same camera. But anyway, that's, that's a different conversation. I don't know why I keep going. I keep going off track in story time. I also feel awkward now. Like, I don't know where to look anymore. Like, where am I looking to like look at you guys? But uh, why am I sweating as well? I'm hardly, whenever I stand up over here, whether it's hot or cold, I start sweating. I'm not even moving that much. I'm hardly moving outside the camera frame. How am I sweating? Anyway, I bought a camera, introduced vlogs and people like that, and I thought, hey, let's introduce reactions. They're popular on YouTube. And as an inspiration from I'm Dante, I'm Dante's a YouTuber slash rapper who has a reaction channel. Still a reaction channel, I'm pretty sure. He reacts on Twitch now, I think. Uh, he, has, he has YouTube channels, though. He did a series where he was going around YouTube, clicking random videos. So imagine you're on YouTube, you're bored, you're clicking random videos. One minute you're watching a giraffe eating something. The next thing you're watching a prank video. The next thing you know that there's a lion um, high-fiving a gazelle. You know, ridiculous random things that you might watch. That's what he was doing as a series. He was recording himself just scrolling through YouTube watching random videos. Random funny videos, weird videos. I thought, you know what? This is entertaining. I need to do my own twist on this one. So that's what I did. Introduce new, a new series called Random Reactions, which you may or may not heard of. But for the first episode, I got my request from Twitter. I just thought, hey, um, I have a good Twitter following. I asked my Twitter followers about what to react to. And a guy I knew, Australian guy, recommended me AFL. So I'm in this group chat. This group chat started in 2013. It had like 30 people, but most of them left and it was down to like 10, 8 to 10 people. And it was quite diverse, not even on purpose, but a guy called Mike put the group together and it was just happened to be like from all over the world. There's an American guy, just your casual stand-up American working guy. And there's a Norwegian girl, there's a few Asians, there's a North African, there's me in England, and then there's two Australians, right? So one of these Australians is an AFL fan. I'm pretty sure he said West Coast. 
I don't know too much about him, but what I do know is he is Aboriginal, he drives a truck, and his... Well, I know his name, I'm not going to tell you, but his YouTube channel is Genuine Penguin Productions, and I am in his profile picture that I actually made, so I'm kind of proud of that. He doesn't load on there anymore, but uh, that is his, he's the one who recommended me AFL, so I'm grateful to him. I haven't heard from him in a while. Or the American guy, actually. We sort of like lost touch now. Like the group chat is still there. It still exists on Twitter. But like, everyone just got busy. Everyone's either gone to a uni or moved countries or started a job and no one ever talks in there anymore. Anyway, this guy recommended me an AFL video. He, he sent like three links. I picked one of them. And I reacted to his AFL video in Random Reactions episode one. So if you want to see my first ever reaction to AFL, you go on that video and it's there. And then, in that video, two people found that video and requested more. So I think it was Dazalinko and Ben Pizzuto, I think? Or was it someone else? Those are the two names I remember quite, oh, quite a lot, because they were there like really early from the first, at least the first few reactions. I think Daz Dazalinko was there for the first one. Uh, but the point is, two people requested more. And I thought I'd do them. I also got rugby requests as well, so I did a, I did a few of those. But I was doing them like once a week, once every few days, I guess, once every eight days, because I'd be prioritizing other things. I, was, I wasn't like into the sport yet, I was just reacting, because I thought, I was looking like, I usually got like 10 views a video. So when I uploaded AFL and it got a thousand views, I was just like, whoa. I mean, I had high viewed videos before because I uploaded videos from live events and Arsenal games and WWE, but this was me, this was me, me in a video. And it got a thousand views. I was just like, whoa, what's happened here then? I was, it, was, it was the same thing for rugby as well. I directed rugby video, a couple of rugby videos. They both got a thousand views. I'm just like, what's, what's, uh, what, what, what? <laughs> Have I unlocked some sort of achievement? What's happening here? Is it Christmas? I'm never all about views. That's why I didn't like automatically just do those, just do those videos. I still did the low view videos. I still did the gaming videos, but when you get 10 views, a video, 10 views a video and then you randomly see one hit a thousand you take notice obviously as a YouTuber you do take notice of that so I got a lot more AFL requests than rugby requests so I thought I'd react to AFL more and um, well as I reacted to it, I, at first it was just for fun because I was enjoying watching this like I wasn't a fan at the time but I did enjoy reacting to AFL I thought it was quite interesting but as I watched more as I reacted more and more to AFL, I got into the sport through reacting. So the more I reacted to, the more compilations I watch, player compilations like Sil Rioli, Eddie Betts, um, team compilations or Road to Glory or whatever. Uh, the more I watch classic games, well, did I watch classic games at the start? I don't know, but it's many compilations I think. But the more I watched, the more I liked. I'm just like, this is a really exciting sport. It's got elements from other sports in it. It's pretty fun to watch. It can be slow, it can be fast paced, it's very interesting, it's very unique the way it's played. I just thought, wow, this sport is interesting. So as I watched more, I got into it more, and that's how I became a fan. That's how I got into AFL. And I picked Hawthorne because I like their kits. Literally, that's, again, stupid reason. Literally, I picked the Lakers because of, of a sitcom. I picked the Kings because of the Lakers. I picked Hawks because I liked them in the compilation. The reasons the reasons are strange. If, if you want to know why Arsenal, by the way, it's because I, I just liked them. You know, when you're a kid, you want to like be entertained when you watch television. And for some reason, I liked Arsenal. I don't. I can't explain. I don't remember when I was five years old, but for some reason, I liked Arsenal. So, yeah, I think in a way they're all stupid reasons. But uh, going back to the Arsenal stuff. That failure, Champions League final, heartbreaking failure that still hurts me to this day. If that didn't happen, if all this pain, all this failure didn't happen, then I would not have seeked a new sport. Therefore, I probably wouldn't have looked into AFL, probably wouldn't have got into AFL as, as much as I did. So that kind of shows that good things can come out of bad situations. So anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. This is your boy David. Off, please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and see ya. I roll the dice, see where life takes me. I've been feeling down on these nights lately.